we're going to be looking at the binomial expansion. But before that, I want to sort of first of all explain what we mean by binomial. And after that, we're going to take a look at, you know, why we might even want to use a trick. So I'm going to try to sort of motivate us for why we want to use a trick for this, because otherwise it's going to be really gross. So first of all, binomial expansion. What does bi mean? Well, bi means two things. For example, a bicycle has two wheels. Biplane has two wings. And yes, bisexual means you like both. I mean, bi just means two. So something that's binomial, that just means two terms or two numbers. I might say terms. That's maybe a clearer way to say it. So something that's a binomial has two terms. So uh, for example, we could say, um, let's see, something that's binomial, maybe a plus b. That's something with two terms. That's a binomial. Or I could say, I don't know, x plus 1. That's something with two terms. Maybe it looks really weird. Maybe it's like 1 over x minus 3y, let's say. This still has two terms, a term here and a term here. These are all binomials. So now let's take a look at uh, this. So maybe we want to do something. Maybe we'll say uh, if we want, um, let's say, to calculate or to sort of, yeah, let's just say if we want. If we want a plus b to the power of 2. Let's just say we want to try to sort of expand this. Now here's a mistake that a lot of students make. So I'm going to do something wrong on purpose. I'm going to say this. Well, that's easy. It's just a squared plus b squared, right? Wrong. This is not the same, so be very, very careful. This is not just a squared plus b squared. If it was a b squared, then you could say it's a squared b squared. Yes, you can sort of distribute this that way. But you cannot do that if it's a plus b squared. It totally ruins things for you. So you can't do that. So maybe a good way to do it instead is to write it twice. So we'll try to do that. So maybe we'll say, um, so maybe we'll do this as an example here. So example, we'll say a plus b squared. Well, what's that going to be? Let's see. We're going to write it as a plus b times a plus b. That's really what this means. If it's squared, it means it happens twice. Well, then let's be very careful. Let's multiply each of these terms by each of these. So we'll go a times a. That's a squared. I'm going to sort of go a times a and then a times b. So in that case, a times b is a b. Well, now I also, now I've multiplied this first one by these two, and I have to multiply this one by these two. So I'm going to go b times a. And then I have to do b times b. So in this case right here, let's say it's a squared. Now, a b plus b a, a b equals b a. They're the same thing. So because of that, I have two of them. So I can say plus 2 a b plus b squared. That would be my answer. Do you notice it wasn't just a squared plus b squared? You were missing a term. So be very, very careful with that. You have to sort of do it by hand. So that's, that's OK, I guess. Let's do something a little bit more complicated. Maybe let's do let's do a plus b to the power of 3, let's say. Well, that's going to be just a plus b times a plus b times a plus b. Now, we've already done this work right here, so I don't feel like doing that again. So I'm just going to say that's a plus b. Whoops. Don't want to. Oh, no. I guess I'll just do it like this. There we go. I meant to just erase something, but of course it erased everything. Let's just look at the answer we just got in this one here. So it's a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So times a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Ugh. So now in order to do it cubed, we'll have to multiply this one by all of them. So I have to do this times this, this times this, this times this. Let's do that. So that's a times a squared is a cubed a times 2ab is going to be, well, the 2 just remains a 2. The a and the a multiply each other, so that's a squared. And the b just hangs out. And then plus, I have a times b squared, so it's ab squared. I can't do anything else with those. But then I also have to multiply b times this, and b times this, and b times this. So plus, let's see, b times a squared. Well, let me just always put the a's first. So I'll say a squared b instead. Maybe that'll a little bit easier to look at. And then b times 2ab, well that's going to be 2 times a 
those don't really do anything, but the b and the b, they can multiply each other, so we have b squared. All that plus b times b squared, which is b cubed. Boy, this is really ugly. Now, can we combine anything? Yes, we can have 2a squared b can actually combine with this a squared b. And this, maybe I'll do it a different color, this ab squared can combine with that ab squared. So those can sort of play together. So in that case, then I have a cubed plus, let's see, 2a squared b plus 1a squared b is three of them. So 3a squared b. Ugh, this is getting really ugly. Plus 1ab squared plus 2ab squared gives me 3ab squared plus b cubed. Phew. Can you see why this is getting annoying? Now, what if we have something um, even worse? What if we have something like a plus b to the power of 4? What do we do then? You might be sweating and thinking, I don't want to watch this. That's true. I don't feel like doing it. So I'm going to say, no thanks. Um, what if we have a plus b to the power of 10? Uh, that's yuck. I mean, I don't feel like doing that at all. Okay, so I'm just trying to motivate you for the fact that doing it by hand is, is doable. It's perfectly possible to do it for sort of small powers. But as we get larger and larger powers, it gets really horrible. I mean, this is already worse, and this gets so much worse. It's going to be a big, giant mess of A's and B's all over the place. It's going to be really horrible. At least I think it is. So what do we do? Well, we're going to have a trick. The trick will be what's called the binomial expansion. So I hope I've motivated you to why we want a trick here. Okay, so the, so the, the leading thing right here is we need a trick. A trick. We need a shortcut. We need some way to get to these sort of things easier. And that's actually called the binomial expansion. So that's what we're going to do. So the, that's the binomial, well, sorry, not binomial expansion. We're going to call it the binomial theorem. That's going to be sort of the idea behind it is. That's how we're going to do really gross looking binomial expansions like this. We're going to call it the binomial theorem.